Welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining tonight. Uh, it's good to see some familiar faces and some uh, new faces as well. This is a exciting night um, for me, I think, hopefully for, for you all as well. Um, I think you're all probably fans of Clonakilty. A lot of you have probably visited Clonakilty Distillery. I know we've enjoyed the brand products for quite a while in the States um, because they've had uh, a pretty extensive core range as well as a lot of limited edition uh, beer finish and, and other types of whiskeys that they've released over the years. Uh, but tonight is a special occasion because we're going to be celebrating the U S release of their first hundred percent uh, distilled whiskey at the distillery. They're a single pot still. It uh, came out earlier this year. Uh, came to the States in the last, over the last month or so. Um, so we're going to be talking uh, quite a bit about that release, as well as all things Klonic Kilty, the distillery, the history of the family. Um, and I, you know, what better person to uh do that with then um then sean scully co-founder uh sean welcome thank you yeah hi everyone and um you know first of all um alan and and extended group thanks very much for having me on um very very happy to be here presenting to you guys um and presenting such a special whiskey you know, this is the this single pass of the whiskey is what we've been working towards since day one since we started distilling our our um our opened our distillery in 2019. But in reality, you know, it's been long before that, back to 2012, 2013. So I hope to give you guys kind of the inside look into what that process was like. Um, and we're also going to sample um our double oak uh whiskey, which many of you probably have tried at this point, and our port cask finish. So um Obviously, familiar faces in here. A lot of you guys will be familiar with our brand and our story, but I'm probably going to just tell the story as if, you know, pretending that no one knows it, I suppose. Um, if you guys want me to go into more depth about anything, um, please please let me know. I'm happy to keep this as interactive as possible, like uh, Alan said. Um, so the more questions, the better. So, um, yeah, without further ado, I suppose, Alan, we can, we can play that video. The story of Clonakilty Distillery starts just outside the town at the Galleyhead Lighthouse, an area of incredible natural beauty. Our fields at the foot of the lighthouse are the perfect environment to nurture and grow the finest of barley, exclusively for our own uniquely Irish single pot still whiskey. Centuries of sea mist, soft rain and salty ocean spray provide a complexity to the soil that permeates right through to each individual grain. The Scully family, founders of Clonakilty Distillery, have farmed this coastal land for 320 years and eight successive generations. As custodians of this majestical slice of coastline, we trust our soil our Atlantic maritime climate and our untouched water aquifers. At the distillery here at the waterfront in Clonakilty, we use this barley in addition to barley carefully sourced from local farmers to produce our own distinctive new make spirit. Our three beautiful copper pot stills have been handmade to perfection by the family of firm of Barrison in Italy, who have a tradition of craftsmanship of more than 100 years, specifically designed for a triple distilled Irish pot still whiskey. The still house is largely manually operated, just giving Paul, our head distiller, the opportunity to fine tune and lovingly handcraft each individual batch. The tall neck stills naturally produce an elegant spirit while the unique mixture of malted and unmalted barley will give the spirit its wonderful complexity that can only be achieved 
from an Irish single pot still. For cutting our Numex spirit, we source the purest of water from our own dedicated well at the Scully family farm. Remote and unspoiled, the water is drawn from deep within the ancient rock formations by our ocean cliffs. Cold, unadulterated freshness, generously gifted by Mother Nature herself. This cutting and cask filling is done on the family farm at our Atlantic Ocean warehouse, 200 feet above sea level by the cliff edge. It is where we mature the finest of whiskies. Pure, clean air, transported across thousands of miles of Atlantic Ocean, providing a freshness unspoilt by human intervention. This is a magical place with a unique and special diversity of climate. Like the ocean itself, it is ever changing from the wild Atlantic storms to the glass calm reflections of a perfect summer's day. In this dynamic natural environment, the whiskey will only sleep for a short while. Instead, interacting with the wood and the angels to develop a unique and distinct maritime flavour. Just as the alcohol vapour evaporates from our barrels, the sea salt laden air permeates through the wood, over time imparting its unique flavour to the whisky inside. After 320 years of farming the land at the known, we're used to living on the edge of Europe in a place apart. Now is the time to embark on a new journey, to give something back, to share the craft spirits that feed soul. We invite you to join with us on this very special journey. Gives you a good idea of the location, at least. Um, that is an old video, so small update from that is that uh, it showed Paul Corbett, our old distiller. Uh, our new distiller is Oshin Mulcahy, um, ex uh distillery. Um, and he was the man behind, um, he, was man he was driving the um, the single pasta release. So he's the mastermind behind that, really, to be honest, uh, and the casks used for it. So, um, yeah, uh, I suppose we can start with that presentation. And I believe we're going to um, start drinking whiskey straight off the bat because I don't want yeah. to keep you guys waiting. And I know there's thirsty folk on the call. So we're going to start off with our double oak finish again, which plenty of people may be familiar with, given that this was our core whiskey um, up to the point of releasing our single pot still whiskey. It's still part of our core range, but, um, you know, the single pot still is the, is the main skew, I suppose, moving forward. So this, um, the double oak finish is uh, the whiskey you guys have in your in your hands right now. If you have a bottle, probably isn't our own juice, if I'm being honest. Uh, we are transitioning to having our own juice in this bottle. Um, but it's it's on in the market in Ireland, but not in the States yet. Um, so this is a blended Irish whiskey. Um, so malt uh, and grain. Uh, it's matured in ex-bourbon casks and then finished off in two separate casks. Um, the first being virgin American oak, and then the second being a shade and retoasted Bordeaux red wine cask. So although it's branded as a double oak, it's actually tri technically triple oaked. Uh, the reason it is still branded branded a double oak, although it's three different woods used, is because initially we actually didn't use the Neoc casks, New Year of cask, in, um, in this blend. So it was ex-bourbon and virgin American oak initially. Um, and then we were introduced to these shade and retoasted Bordeaux casks, and we decided to, decided to utilize them. Uh, it elevated this whiskey from silver medal in San Francisco to a gold medal, uh, won world's best blended Irish whiskey at the World Whiskey Awards. So it really took it up a notch. Um, and other distilleries had actually adopted using these casks off the back of that. Uh, I believe we were the first distillery in Ireland to start using them. So... Um, <laughs> Yeah, naturally enough, you know, your virgin American oak is going to bring that charred oak spice uh, forward, vanilla, um, you know, caramel from the ex-bourbon, all those, you know, traditional whiskey notes you're all familiar with. But um, again, this this uh, Neoc cask is the really unique one in this in this um, blend. Um, what makes it unique is that the staves in this cask, uh, this cask is about one and a half, they're about one and a half times as thick as a regular bourbon cask would be. Um, so you get that extra potential range of movement for that whiskey to soak into the barrel and pull out all those wonderful flavors. Um, it's also hand shaved, 
as opposed to being shaded by a machine. So a lot of casks when they're when they're shaded by a machine, it's actually you the buzzes up on like a rotisserie basis and creates loads of sawdust. And that sawdust is so fine that it can actually clog the, the capillaries in the wood and reduce the you know the interaction between the, the whiskey and um and the wood. Um so these casks are hand shaved with the grain, so nice clean shavings, um, thus minimal sawdust created and those capillaries stay open. So when you couple the fact that you know you're going to all this ex extra effort to hand shave the casks uh, and rejuvenate the casks in general, um, and if you couple that with uh, the fact that these staves are actually thick, the amount of flavor you actually pull for these casks is more substantial than um, than regular casks. So yeah, like I said, um, that was something we trialed and we found it made a massive difference. So we switched uh, switched it up a bit uh, and uh, decided not to rebrand it to a triple oak cask because it was already in consumers minds it was set as double oak so we stuck to our guns there in that sense um but uh yeah lovely approachable whiskey all around um like i said it was our lead whiskey up to this point um i find that there's a depth of complexion to it especially if you sit down with a nice full glass of it over you know 30 minutes or so it really evolves over time in your glass slide up everyone. that toast slide up um Funnily enough, I actually was looking for a double oak around the house before I hopped on the call, and it's the one whiskey I didn't have to hand. I need to refill my stock of it. So what I'm drinking actually is um, our Galley Head, um, Galley Head Green Label, we call it, behind the scenes. So I don't know if people, anyone's come across this yet. This released in the States, um, which is only a couple of weeks ago, and it's our first whiskey, uh, our first entry-level skew uh, in the US. So we've had Galley Head uh blue and galley head red over in ireland and europe and some people may have tried that uh i got their hands on it through irish malt or someone um but uh this galley head green is it's a blend of whiskey about 90 percent grain but we do blend in 10 percent of our pot still into it just to boost that viscosity um boost the complexity of it a bit um and it's it's solely mature and next bourbon casks no finish or anything like that but it's it's a lovely drop you know, it's retailing for twenty nine ninety five, so it's you know it's not going to be the most complex whiskey in the world. But I think when you're at that price point, you're looking for easy drinking, approachable. You know, I don't ever want to use the word smooth, but you know, at that price point, that's really what you're looking for. It's versatile as well, uh, great for cocktails, great sipping neat. So, Sean, will the colors differentiate Galley Head going forward? Yeah, yeah. So we're we're sticking to um this galley head green uh label um for the states. Um and we're gonna that's gonna enter other markets as well around the world. Um but over in Ireland we're gonna retain galley head uh, blue and red. Blue being a single malt, red being a rum cask finish. And those won't those won't come to the States. <clears throat> no, they they won't be available in the States unless you, you import them. Okay. Um but it's it's kind of it's it's a part of our uh, skew reconfiguration, our pricing re re reconfiguration, I suppose, on our part. Um, you know, whereas up to this point, all our skews were around the fifty bucks mark. Um, we've decided to introduce the galley head at twenty nine. Uh, we've actually reduced the price of the double oak um, down to thirty nine ninety five in most markets. It hasn't been reduced on our online shop yet, but that will happen in time. But you'll, you might find it in local markets uh, on the shelf at thirty nine ninety five. Um, it was you know up to fifty four ninety five at one point only a couple months ago. So it's a a really really good deal for a high quality whiskey, if I'm honest. So we're we're pretty proud to be able to bring the prices down, whereas you know other distilleries are increasing their prices. Um, and then to top that off, uh, the pot still is going to be on the shelves or is on the shelves as many people know at forty nine ninety five. So again, we worked really hard to um, you know, minimize packaging, one from a sustainability standpoint, but also from a cost standpoint, to be able to get that single pot still on the shelves of $49.95 to be really competitive. Brand story. Um so I suppose I was, I was telling you I'm gonna start it off, you know, at the very beginnings. Um so Distillery opened in twenty. The distillery, the physical distillery opened in 2019. Uh we were founded in 2016. But the idea for the distillery was in the works from about, you know, about 20, 2012, uh, 
2013 ish. Uh, that's when I was in college in UCC in Cork. And what I would do is I knew my dad was up to something kind of, he had his, um, you know, he was thinking of starting a new distillery, a new uh, business, a uh, local business. He wanted to uh, provide jobs to the locality. Uh, and I knew he wanted to, um, to um, showcase the farm in some sense. But I was, uh, yeah, I was in college and I'd come down on the, on the weekend, started arriving on Friday morning, uh, Friday evening. And my dad would have, you know, the kitchen island, it would be in a mess and there'd be, you know, coffee filters, mesh strainers, you know, bottles full of white liquid, which I was, or clear liquid, which I didn't know what it was at the time. Obviously it was, it was a neutral spirit unlabeled. So he was just playing my mad scientist. Um, after a while, you know, I, I said, and B didn't really question it after a while, uh, asked him what he was doing. And, uh, it turned out he was trying to make a lemoncello, um, out of whey from a neutral whey spirit from the family farm. So yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't normally tell that story himself, but it's a small bit of insight that I only have pretty much. So, um, so yeah, he was, he was on this path basically just to, to showcase what we can make from our land. Um, so we've been farmers, um, for 350 years. Uh, we've, uh, if I was to take over the farm, I'd be the ninth generation of the farm. So we're very proud of it. Um, as you can see in that photo, that's myself when I had some hair in my head, when there was less stress in my life, um, prior to operating a distillery. Um, uh, my brother, younger brother, Connor and my, um, my grandfather, uh, Cornelius, uh, who would have, um, owned the farm as well and um it was actually introduced in the first in, into uh, introduction into the west cork farming hall of fame um served in brussels on the Ag agricultural committee so uh, as a very very well known guy in the farming community unfortunately passed away um a couple of years ago but um yeah so we my dad's initial plan was to use this neutral way spirit to make a spirit um the lemoncello idea didn't work out after you went to UCC uh, and she played around with things, mm -hmm. but we, um, he ultimately, you know, saw the Irish whiskey renaissance happening um, and decided, you know, why don't, why don't we just kick this, kick this barley game back into action um, and start growing more barley and make, make Irish whiskey. Mm -hmm. um, you guys may know that we make uh, our minky Irish vodka and our minky Irish gin from, uh, from whey. So that's how we tie back in the whey based story in the dairy farm. Um, but you know, from this point on, whiskey was the uh, was the big thing, and that was that's what we were driving towards. Um, and the yeah, the plan from day one was make fantastic single pot still whiskey uh, made from barley from the family farm grown ocean side. Uh, and like I said, this is this is in the works since twenty thirteen, and now now we're here and we have our we have our single pot still out in the market. So it's pretty crazy to see that we're at this point already. It seems it seems like such a distant uh, goal. Um, you know, back in the day, but um, we're here now and we're delighted to be here. So, um, maritime influence barley. So, you, this is the Galleyhead Peninsula. Um, Galleyhead Irish whiskey is named after the Galleyhead Lighthouse that you can see there in the background. Um, that lighthouse was built in the late 1800s. Uh, it is actually the strongest man made light in the world, surprisingly enough. Um, at one point, um, it's yeah, it only it only had that accolade for about two years uh, until another uh, lighthouse was built, so it didn't didn't last long. But um, yeah, it's an iconic iconic landmark uh, in County Cork. Um, so that the peninsula or the area in the background of this photo isn't our farm, but those those um, fields in the left foreground, that's the family farm right there. So that barley is used to make our single pot still whiskey. Um, and um, yeah, obviously it's a it's a special place. It's a beautiful place, but it's not just a story. You know, we always wanted to make it you know tangible and have it make a difference to the end product. Um, so yeah, the whole idea is you know that's that's a nice day in Ireland. You know, um, you know normally it's stormy. You have those waves crashing onto the rocks, creating sea spray, landing on the barley, um, and you know imparting almost like a salinity on the barley um obviously that that soil also is um heavily sea salt laden so that's going to affect how the barley grows um you know the barley is going to grow it's almost it tries to be resistant i suppose to the elements and it grows a more thick husk and thus there's less starch in the barley 
and um you know less starch less fermentable sugars yields aren't as high but i'll probably i'll mention it plenty of times in this presentation you know for us it's all about the quality not the quantity so we're happy to make sacrifices in what we're doing and um you know not worry too much about inefficiencies in that sense obviously we're trying to be in, as efficient as possible but um you know we're trying to produce a unique spirit at the end of the day and one that people will, will enjoy so um so yeah that's where we um that's where we grow our, for our single pastel again the second the unmalted barley component comes from those fields but i'll discuss that more in a second um distillation wise um that's our distillery in the center of town you can see our location there on the right we're right down the southwest tip of ireland um in cork um this distillery was actually built to be a bank in 2008 but i always say that was a uh, naturally enough a, a terrible time to want to build a bank so the bank uh never moved in due to the recession and it became an irish speaking whale skull for primary school children uh, for a couple of years when they were um, renovating their their other school. Um, laid, laid idle for a couple more years and uh, we decided to purchase it uh, to build our distillery. The original plan was actually potentially to to build a distillery out on that Galliad Peninsula, but you know, with, with those roads and stuff, um, you know, it's you can barely fit one large car down them. So for for tourists and stuff like that, that wouldn't that wouldn't go. So this um yeah this distillery was uh, distillery is built and opened in 2019. Um, it's on the Wild Atlantic Way. We had to knock down, you know, some floors to fit in those stills, drop them through the roof. It was a big deal. Um, there's a restaurant there on the site, uh, apartments, visitor center, gift shop, the whole lot. Um, because it's such a a stunning uh, image. When for those of you who've you know been lucky enough to to get to Clonakilty. Um, I'm just curious because of the location there and it's kind of a, I guess there's a light there in a corner, but yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if there are accidents a lot in front of it because people are staring at the stills and, you know, and not paying attention to the road as, it, as they're approaching it because it's uh, quite striking. Yeah, that's, that's funny <laughs> enough. Yeah, I, I haven't I haven't heard of any accidents. It's a <laughs> really nice, yeah, long road that basically where, the, where this photo was taken behind it there's a lot one of the main long roads in clonakilty so you, you come down it and you can just see the stills the whole way around and there's um there's a roundabout there as well so no accidents yet but <laughs> right, um good. yeah, yeah. It, it certainly garners a lot of attention uh and obviously purposely so you know it was um it was built to be a iconic um iconic site in clonakilty and you can't miss it on the wild atlantic way um so yeah um Barley is grown on Oceanside. Uh, we bring it five miles inland uh, into the town of Clannacilty. And I'll talk about maturation in a second. Um, but the distillery is, um, it's its a very manual distillery. Our distillers make cuts based on uh, taste and nosing. So they're, they're trained and trusted um, to do this. Um, and we also practice um, extra long fermentation times. Uh, this presentation says 72 hours. Honestly, that's, it's it's more like 100 plus hours sometimes 120 plus hours so again quality time not rushing things make sure we're producing the uh the best whiskey possible um so we're we're very conscious about that uh before i get on to maturation um i suppose we'll crack into the single postal whiskey given that that's why everyone's probably here so hopefully a lot of people got their hands in a bottle. I saw some orders come in from the online shop and um, I know a lot of you guys are from Boston and sorry, it's a bit of a debacle trying to trying to get those bottles to you guys, but hopefully a lot of you have it on, on hand. Um, so our single pot still whiskey, um, it is, I saw someone asking about the percentage of malted and unmalted barley in single pot. So it's 60% unmalted barley, 40% malted barley. Uh, obviously, we would, we have the option with the technical file to include up to five percent other grains, um, but we we didn't do that, so we're just sticking to unmalted and malted barley. Uh, the unmalted barley uh, component is uh, the unmalted barley that we use is grown here um, on the family farm, or else it's sourced from neighboring farms uh, within like a five to ten mile radius around uh, Clonakilty. Um, 
So we're, as many of you probably know, we're very sustainably focused. I'll touch on it at the very end of, our present, uh, of the presentation, but we do that. Um, we like to source locally, you know, because it's more sustainable in general and to support those local farmers. Um, you can see on the bottom, bottom of our bottle, we use 100% Irish barley. So the malt, uh, we do source the malted barley. Uh, we don't have a malting floor. Uh, so that, that comes from the malting company, malting company of Ireland and County Cork. So while it's 100% Irish barley, it's also 100% Cork barley. Um, so that's um, that's a plus. Um, so the single pot still is um, matured in ex-bourbon casks um, and also in Oloroso and Amontillado sherry casks. So again, this was Oshin Mulcahy, our head distiller's idea to, to use these casks. He played around with a lot of different options and ultimately landed on, um, on these three casks. Um, for me, the really unique cask here is the Amontillado Sherry. Uh, it provides a nice nuttiness to the whiskey, um, but also a very unique uh, salinity to it. And obviously, coming back to the barley fields and everything, the plan was to have the ocean influence the whiskey and provide a brine-like influence on the end product. And I feel like we've done that. Um, um, but uh, the Amontillado uh, does add a, a unique salinity to the product as well. So it kind of boosts that a small bit. So where, where I would get that salinity is on the back end, the finish of this whiskey. Um, it's almost like a sea salt caramel note. Um, vanilla, dem demerara, sugar, kiwi is a very present note on the nose for me in this, which is really unique. Um, and then the palate, um, caramelized pear and apple, it says here, gentle wood spice, if you guys have ever tried um, Jaffa cakes, um, it's a dark chocolate. It's like a dark chocolate, an orange, and like a vanilla sponge biscuit that we have in Ireland. I'm not sure. I don't think it's really available in the US. But if you guys have ever tried that, um, I definitely get Jaffa cake notes coming through in this whiskey as well. So um, might be worth trying to get your hands on Jaffa cakes and pair with this whiskey. It's it's uh, uncanny, in my opinion. I saw someone online talking about it a couple of weeks ago as well. Um, so, yeah, 46% uh, ABV and um, matured at our Atlantic Ocean Warehouse. So, um, yeah. Anybody um, trying it for the first time tonight? I'd be, I'd be delighted to hear um, everyone's insight into it and, and thoughts on it. Um, we really, so we really, like Alan said at the start, we launched it in Ireland uh, in May at Whiskey Live. And that's where I met Alan and maybe a couple of the others. I know there's a, a decent crew over from the Irish Whiskey Society of America. Um, and the reception too was amazing. Um, you know, it's always, it's always a risk putting out your first distillate and we were patient with, patient with it. Um, we, we initially wanted to release it as probably a six or seven year old, but then we started winning these awards. Uh, we won um, what's called best new make spirit in Ireland on two occasions uh, for this for a single pot still distillate. So that made us uber confident that we're laying down, laying down fantastic spirit. Um, we also won that award for a single malt. So we won that award on three occasions, twice for the pot still, once for the single malt. Um, no other distillery in Ireland has won that accolade more than once. So we're very proud of that. So, um, so yeah, given that we were, you know, confident in the distillate, um, and in the juice in general, we decided to, you know, I wouldn't say expedite the release, but we pushed the release forward two years, uh, and released it as a five-year-old. And yeah, we were blown away by the reaction to it, uh, and the reception of Whiskey Live. And then obviously there's a delay to bring it to the States. So just launching in the States uh, in September. Yeah, and I, um, I think we I don't can think go... that I don't think the um, bringing it early, um, you know, was a bad call by any means. I know some uh, other releases came early and <clears throat> weren't as maybe well received. I think um, the nose on this is phenomenal, but uh I'm really enjoying this. I, I, um, when I was doing the review last month, I kept going back. It was, I probably spent more time drinking the bottle during the review because I liked the whiskey so much. Cause I, it had been months since Whiskey Live when I had had it the first time. And it's tough at Whiskey Live too because you're drinking so many different things. Yeah. But when you're able to really sit with the bottle, 
Um, this is a really, really nice uh, single pot still. Um, really good, I think, representation of the style. So this is a small bit of a different perspective on um, the Galley Head Peninsula, um, just to give you context of uh, where our maturation warehouse is. Um, so in the left foreground here where all those houses are, that's where the barley fields are. Obviously, that's a different time of year. Uh, no, bar no barley growing right there. Um, but in the, the right-hand uh, background, there's kind of almost like a separate separate peninsula and uh, that's the dairy fight our dairy farm over there uh and that's you can see just it was just um just below uh alan's cursor and to the right there's a little building um that's the warehouse right there personal cliff edge so so that's the warehouse um so the plan was not to just grow the barley ocean side the plan was to mature the whiskey ocean side as well um so we boast i'd like to say one of the closest, if not the closest, because I, I do think it is the closest maturation warehouse to the ocean in all of Ireland. Um, it's um, perched 200 feet above the ocean, basically on a cliff edge. Um, so the warehouse is actually purposely designed to have um, have the uh, the exterior elements interact with the wood and the casks as much as possible. So we have air vents at the top, um, of one side of the warehouse at the bottom of the other side of the warehouse, just so the wind comes in and it whips around there um, and, you know, influences uh, the whiskey within the casks. So I suppose for maturation, you have three things. You have your wood, your whiskey, and your atmosphere. And it really, the whole story is just how those interact together. Naturally enough, here in the southwest coast of Ireland, it's going to be very sea salt laden air. Um, and... Um, that air is going to, you know, fill up the warehouse. Um, when you have your angel share, there's going to be vacant space in the cask, and that's just not a, a black hole or anything. You know, actually, stuff something has to go in there, matter of some sorts. Um, so it's filled with with the air that surrounds the casks. So you're gonna, and ultimately, at the end of the day, you're gonna have you know the whiskey sitting in the cask, and then that sea salt laid in there. And when that's sitting there for five years um, plus, you know, that's bound to influence the whiskey. So, uh, like I said earlier on, I, th I think we you do get a small bit of saline-like quality on the back end of this whiskey. Um, it's going to be more pronounced when the whiskey, uh, when we release when we release batches that are older, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years. Who who knows what age they'll be? Um, but I, I do think it makes a difference. Uh, we also use um, uh, our our well water from the family farm to cut down this whiskey. Um, as as you guys can probably tell from this point. We try to control as many aspects um, of our um, production process as possible. So we, we do the barley, we do the distillation, um, maturation, well water. Uh, we have our um, yeah warehouse storage. It, you'd be surprised how many distilleries in Ireland don't have their own where, warehouse storage. Uh, we do our own bottling, which again, you'd be surprised how many distilleries don't do their own bottling. Um, so really the only thing we don't, we don't produce our own, um, yeast. There was talk of us maybe producing a yeast derived from bees from the farm at one point, but I think, um, you know, there was a bit too much on our plate at that point. So we, we can, we pushed back on that a small bit and we've, we might do it down the road, but not for now. Um, and we don't have our own malting floor, but yeah, like, like I said, we try to do everything in house that we can, um, one to make sure we're producing the best quality whiskey um and um two efficiencies i suppose and then we get to some um technical processes that we've implemented to make these whiskeys our own i suppose these were these were really important to us when we were sourcing whiskey um you know we we were obviously fin you know bringing whiskey and we were finishing in different casks and stuff to put our own stamp on on whiskeys um, but we wanted to go an extra step and um, implement technical processes as well. So the first uh, technical process we're going to talk about is minimal filtration. Um, initially, when we did our first bottling, um, my brother, my father, myself were, were doing it at a different distillery. Um, and we were filtering to eight microns, uh, which is industry standard. And what we found is, is our port cask finish. Um, which if you guys have a bottle, um, 
it has a, a nice kind of deep red hue to it. Um, it um, when it's filtered to eight microns, we notice like a, a thin translucent film like build up on the um, on the filter. Um, and what was happening was it was just that was all fl uh, fatty flavor congeners um, that that weren't getting through the filter and weren't getting through to the bottle at all. Um, so we were um, we were losing out on those desirable flavor congeners in the whiskey. And it was also stripping um, the whiskey of all its natural color. So it's coming out really pale uh, and unpleasant. So what we decided uh, is we wanted to open up uh, the filter and, and uh, implement this minimal filtration process. Uh, and we opened it up to 31 microns versus 8 microns. Um, that allowed us to retain all those fatty flavor congeners and um, allowed those congeners to pass through the filter and the natural color. Uh, we also practice minimal filtration, um, which is important to us. But uh, yeah, so like I said, that was that was the the reasoning we wanted to make that source whiskey really our own uh, and and do do this minimal minimal filtration. But you know we're not stopping it now. We have our own juice. We're still we're still implementing this minimal fil filtration. We have our uh, our second technical process, which is the gentle cut. Again, we did this with our source whiskey, and we're still doing it. But um, yeah, we like I said, we use our um, our own well water from the family farm. It's literally the purest of the pure uh, water you can get. If we weren't forced by the Irish whiskey technical file um, to treat it, we wouldn't have to treat it at all. Um, so the gentle cut is is a process that we borrowed from the um, the cognac industry, uh, and it was presented to us by an advisor. It's um it's a process of where you cut down your whiskey from cast strength to bottling strength over the period of about two to three weeks. Um, most distilleries will cut down their whiskey over the process of about, you know, geez, a couple hours. Um, so they're literally, you know, blending it, cutting it, uh, bottling it out the door. There you go. Um, we have our vatting tanks tied up for two to three weeks at a time. So this is something we can do as a smaller distillery that bigger distilleries can't. So it's a really unique way to differentiate ourselves. So we're literally adding a couple of gallons of uh, our well water, you know, every day and slowly proofing it down from, you know, 60% ABV or whatever it may be, you know, down to, you know, 58, 56, slowly bring it down to 43.6 or 46 for a single pot still. Um, and uh, what that does is it creates a more pleasant mouthfeel uh, in the whiskey because it allows more... Um, it's, when you when you dump a ton of water into a, a vatting tank in one go, it actually creates an exothermic reaction. So the water and the whiskey almost like fight each other, and it creates a ton of heat. Uh, and that heat can actually uh, damage the more delicate flavor flavor congeners in a whiskey. Um, so it can, it can also damage the mouthfeel of the whiskey. Um, so that's the reason we do it uh, primarily. Um, also more flavor congeners, the different flavor congeners will develop at different ABVs. So as you proof it down, you might get more, you know, dark fruit esters developing your high ABVs, more low, uh, light fruit esters, uh, develop it, developing at your lower ABVs. So we just allow the whiskey to develop over time. And, you know, I suppose, albeit not in the cask, I suppose it's still maturing in a sense while we're doing this gentle cut. Um yeah, yeah. So the port the port finish um it is um it's matured in ex bourbon casks and finished in um ruby port casks. Um so we have we have some barrel picks in the States, which some people may have picked up. Um and as you guys know, it's there's a variety of finishes that we offer in our barrel picks, but one of them is a tawny port barrel picks, and that's one of my favorite barrel picks to be honest. Uh, I love a tawny port finish, but this is ruby port, so a bit less nutty, uh, more dark fruit forward. Um, it's again, this is a blended whiskey, so malt and grain, uh, and we will be blending in our um our single pot still into it in time also. But it's um it's a spicy whiskey. I I guess you know it's being you know European oak rather than American oak. European oak being a spicier variety of oak than American oak is, um. I do get a spicy finish coming through in this, but personally, I, I do enjoy the aspect of this whiskey because I'm not a big fan of an overly sweet whiskey. 
So up front, you'll get that sweetness. You get that dark fruit, cherries, raisins, um, small bit of chili spice in there. And then that back on the back end, then you get that kind of wood spice from that European oak coming through. So this would be, um, unfortunately, this is a whiskey we are kind of phasing out, I suppose. Um, like I discussed at the start, <laughs> Jeff saying no to that. Um, mm -hmm. You'll still find it around. It won't be completely phased out. You know, it'll be a while, but we are redefining our core lineup being the galley head, the double oak, and the single pot still. Um, and this the the poor cask while it will remain in in a sense, um, it's taking a, a small bit of a of a back seat, I suppose. But it's it's a it's a fantastic whiskey. Um, bottle at the same ABV as our double oak, forty three point six percent. Um, yeah, the malt in this whiskey is probably the same as a double oak. It varies from batch to batch, so it's hard to tell. Uh, or hard to say. It's it's probably like a, a four to five year old malt and probably about a six-year-old grain uh, in this blend um, finished off in four casks for about six months. Um, again, one of, the, one of the big positives of being a smaller distillery is that we can be very hands-on in sampling our casks, our head distiller can machine, um, and deciding, you know, this, this cask isn't ready to be disgorged yet and bottled, or it's perfect to go right now. And normally we, we don't go... We don't let it for too long, especially with, with the port cask finish. That's important. Port can overwhelm a whiskey really easily. So he's con once he hits that four-month mark, Oshin's constantly sampling it um, and um, deciding when it's when it's perfect to disgorge. And it's normally around that four to six-month mark uh, where he where he pulls the trigger and disgorges those casks. The difference between Amontillado and Oloroso is Amontillado is aged um, biologically and also oxidatively. So Oloroso is only aged uh, oxidatively. So in, in Amontillado, again, this isn't related to the poor cast. This is a single pot still. Um, a layer of uh, floor yeast actually develops on top um, of the sherry and um you know, that restricts oxidative aging. Um, and thus it's it's kind of like a lighter whiskey, um, lighter flavor concentrate. It's still nutty, um, but it wouldn't be as nutty as an Oloroso sherry. So it's it's aged for part of its life biologically, uh, under this floris cap, and then um it's fortified more, and then the floor yeast uh, dies off, and then it begins its bio or its oxidative. Uh, aging or more um more of those nutty kind of you know dried fruit apricot kind of notes uh develop in the amontillado but it's, it's it's a style of sherry that's um that's being i haven't to be honest it's only in recent years i've really seen it being used in a lot of whiskeys i think it's kind of um seeing a bit of um you know it's, it's been given more attention recently which is great but yeah Oshin Oshin pinpointed the Amontillado is a fantastic um, sherry to use to, to mature our single pot still in because uh, one, the saline-like component that it provides and also th that nutty kind of apricot dried fruit notes that it provides also. Thank you. There was a question yeah. about um, your favorite, I guess. My favorite shipwreck whiskey. Shipwrecked on a desert island, what would you pick? <laughs> Um, of the three today yeah yeah <laughs> i mean i would have to go for single postal to be honest it's um yeah it's yeah you know, i was pretty bullish about it the whole time to be honest and i i always like i said i always knew we had a good spirit um when we started winning those awards and you're you're confident in yourself anyway you know because you're we know we're doing things right um but yeah we started winning those awards and you know i was bullish about it and then when when I tried it for the first time when I was done, I was like, this is a fantastic whiskey. And then we went to, you know, Whiskey Live with it. Um, you know, very enthusiastic about it. And then the consumer reaction backed up how we felt about it. You know, like Kean said, you know, he really enjoyed it there. Um so that was that was amazing. So yeah, I'm a huge fan of the single pot still. Um, but you know, just different different times and moments for all of them.
Exactly. <clears throat> Saw turns could be in the works. Um, no core release. Uh, um, Jeff and D uh, for Saw turns, um, but it's um, but we do have single casks, so that's that's where we're at that right now. What I know, a lot of people are are big fans of cast strength releases. Is there any plan to maybe maybe as a distillery select kind of thing to do a pot still version in, in cast strength? Um, well, we did have that. Um, I know, yeah, your novel release. Novel release. Yep. Yeah, so that was that was um, the cast strength version of that. I think. In time, I think that could definitely present itself. Um, I think we've been guilty over the years of almost, you know, doing too much in a sense. We've done a lot with our brewery collaborations, you know, single casks and all, all this stuff, um, which is amazing. It really gets the word out there about the distillery. But um, with the introduction now of our own spirit and single pot still, it's it's really become a focus like that. We're gonna we're gonna really focus on these core whiskies. And uh, not go too crazy with the with the variations for a while, um, but you know the time will come where there will be different different variations of the um, of the single pot still, whether it's different different casks used um, in maturation or finishing, um, or um, cast strength options, they are are both. Um, I could certainly see that happening down the road. Um, something really unique that you guys may be familiar with, but worth touching on is, um, I suppose it's the next, now that we've released this real big, this is what we've been leading to up to since day one, like I said. Um, and you know, sometimes it's tough to look past that and see you know, what's next on the horizon. What's our next big thing that we're, we're driving towards. Uh, I suppose that would be our heritage barley release. So we've been, uh, we've been growing and cultivating, um, her heritage barley called Goldthorpe uh, on the farm on the coast um, since 2016, I think it was. Um, so basically the story goes, my dad went to the Irish food bank, or Irish seed bank, sorry, and um, and asked for some of this Goldthorpe barley, which would have been grown on the farm back in my grandfather's day. And basically was ceased to be, um, ceased to be used as a commer or, yeah, commercial grain um barley strain due to the fact it grows very tall and it also uh, has a very like floral head um so the wind really batters it you know it's not great for growing on the coasts of ireland so it, it lodges and you lose um you lose a lot of yield of it um so um we wanted to kind of re revitalize it and release a unique heritage barley whiskey so yeah my dad got literally a couple of handfuls of it um, sold it, um, you know, harvested it um, a while later um, and did this over, you know, a couple of years, maybe five years it took for um, us to have enough yield of this barley to actually do a full distillation of it. So I yielded a, you know, you know, a couple of handfuls of bag, then a wheelbarrow, and then it kept going and kept going and kept going. And, um, and yeah, this is something we're going to kind of be releasing on an annual basis. It's going to be a, uh, like a Middleton, very rare kind of release. I don't know if that's going to be a cast strength or at your, you know, lower ABVs. That's up for Oshin to decide. He always decides predom predominantly based on what he thinks is the best whiskey. Obviously, it's important to see, you know, you know what consumers are looking for, but it's also important that he is very confident in putting the whiskey out there at, at what a ABV he thinks is best. So that might be at cast strength. I have no idea. Um, that's is that going to be? That'll be Ireland only, or will that come to the states? Limited edition. Um, I don't know exactly yields. Uh, how many bottles it's going to yield right yeah. now? But there'll be there'll be so there'll be a way to get your hands on it anyway. Hundred mm -hmm. percent. Um, you know this. It could be, it could be distributed in liquor shelves. It could be a lottery system. We're not we're not too sure. It's it's a couple of years down the road. So. We're concentrating now on just selling a single pot still and haven't really thought about that. But once we get this established, that's that's gonna be something to think about in the future. But it's a it's a kind of it's a it's not a passion project, I suppose, but it's it's a it's a really unique project. 
um, that we're really enthusiastic about, and we can't wait till that time comes and we can release that till we can release that. Um, so yeah, um, this is the last slide I have, and obviously we'll dive into more questions and stuff if anyone has anything. But um, quick synopsis of our sustainability. Um, so I would say we were we are leaders, um, are one of the leaders at least, um, especially as a smaller distillery in Ireland, um, for sustainability. Uh, so we like to say our sustainability story is happening now, not in twenty twenty five. So as farmers, this is it's obviously very important to us. Um, so one, we're members of the or Origin Green, uh, which is an independently certified commitment to sustainable cor corporate practice. Um, we actually got Origin Green Gold last year. I'm very proud of that. Um, we support whale and dolphin conservation. Uh. Like I said earlier on, we minimize uh, our transport carbon footprint by keeping 100% of production operations within the local area. You know, that being the barley, and we just still mature and blend all ourselves in the Clonakilty area. Uh, common enough, 100% of our co-products, such as spent grains, pot ale, uh, spent leaves, are recycled to local farmers and are used as fertilizer, animal feed. Uh, recently, we overhauled our um, our uh, bottling um so some of you might have the old bottles like this um we're transitioning to a newer bottle it's slightly taller it has some embossing on it um if you guys get a hand in this bottle this is the new bottle that everything's going to be bottled in including our gin and our vodka um uh it is uh 22 percent lighter so more efficient um to transport and uh thus slowing our, our carbon footprint um and um 98 of our packaging materials are reusable recyclable or compostable this um this new bottle also contains more um recycled glass which is important so again we're we're always pushing to move forward and do better things uh from a sustainable standpoint we're actually pushing to be a a b corp um corporation now um there's only about I think, 20 companies in all of ireland uh, that have B Corp status. Uh, and that's a really, really, really re vigorous um, vetting process. And, um, you know, we pretty much have an employee working in that, you know, solely working in our B Corp status now. Um, so that, that shows how much we value uh, sustainability. Um, our distillery um, has been um, um, designed with the intention of capturing and recycle any excess heat produced from our copper distills. Um, so 100% of the electricity we use at Clonacilty Distillery is made from renewable sources. Um, and we've also planted a permanent wildfire meadow uh, to feed and protect pollinators. This has all happened out by our new warehousing. Um, uh, we have planted over 400 native trees, shrubs and hedgerows to provide small habitats for other wildlife. Uh, and we have built a large dedicated bee bank, which, which will, um, uh, provide a burrow for native bees so um that's only a fact uh that's only a portion of what we're doing if you guys want to check out our website we have a full section on sustainability there but um yeah very much at the forefront of forefront mm -hmm. of our business do you plan to do carbon re uh, reclamation from the brewing process that's something that is i think my dad is actually looking into that right now uh, I haven't had an update on it in a while, but we've we've been in contact with a couple of people about um, uh, processes like that. So you'll you'll hear about it if we do anything like that. But that's that's a big that's a big investment. But again, we're not opposed to making big big investments to uh, to further sustainability um, efforts. So um so yeah, that's that's pretty much the presentation, guys. Um. Again, I appreciate all your time and your enthusiasm for our brand and support up until, you know, now. Um, very exciting time for the distillery, and uh, we look forward to bringing more fantastic whiskeys um, to your uh, to your glasses. Um, and yeah, would love to hear and take any questions that you guys may have um, that haven't been asked already. Sean, just a, a non whiskey question, just for those who may not know the backstory. Could you touch on the, um, you know, the logo, I guess, the minky whale? Yeah. 
Um, so the whale's tail, obviously, being a maritime distillery, it's it naturally could have been our our um our what's called our logo anyway. Um, uh, minky whales do swim off the coastline of Clonakilty and off the the edge of the Galley Head Lighthouse. But when we actually when we purchased the waterfront building where we we built our distillery, and you couldn't see it in that photo, but there's actually a giant copper whale tail right outside it, and it's a it's a fountain that uh, falls into the river. Um, so that was there. It's a pretty iconic landmark in Clonic Kilty. Um, so that kind of naturally uh, became our logo. Oh, so that that was a pre existing uh, statue. Yeah, it was a pre existing statue. Okay. Yeah. That I did not know. I thought that might have been your touch. Yeah, that would have been, well, that would have been nice, I suppose, but it's pretty <laughs> fortuitous, to be honest. It's almost like fate that we were we were meant to move into that building. Mm -hmm. Jeff and Timmy are finishing up a 13-year-old single grain Madeira finish. Very nice. <laughs> Busting out the good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm also I've been I just poured a glass of your um your sink your one of your original core expression single grains. Nice which is in the Bordeaux cask. Yeah, Bordeaux that was, you know, which was I know one. you switched over to the single malt when a few years ago, but <clears throat> there's still a few bottles of that floating around. Yeah, that's a nice nice whiskey. Very, very different to the single malt, but um very light, light and um Lovely strawberry notes in that one. I see a question here from Michael. Uh, for those of us not a fan of cast strength, can you recommend an acceptable way to proof, proof down Clonakilty whiskeys without the benefit of a water <laughs> source? Um, I prefer 47.5% ABV. I don't know how you proof proof down the whiskey without a water source. Um, would you, are you asking like to mix it with anything or something or what? Well, just no, was... I think without the benefit of your water, your well water, I think maybe oh, you need right. to go to Clonakilty and get a sample of the water and bring it back, <laughs> and then you know, then you're covered for a while until you make make another visit. Yeah, I'd be like going to to knock in County Mayo, the Holy Land. You'd get to go get your holy water well, from Clonakilty, and and I just came back from there. So should I use that holy water in my in my Clonakilty whiskey? <laughs> you know what? It's, it's it's oh. Irish water. I have no idea what it's like. Whenever it's, I don't think it's made for drinking, to be honest. But yeah. <laughs> we see I'd you. Say, you know, better off if we see you digging on the family whiskey. land. We'll know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do love the cognac cast, and I don't know if you're still doing that one, but I have that in both the cast strength, and then when I was at the distillery, I bought the the lower proof. So I think it's uh, forty seven five. 46 yeah yeah the the yellow label yeah yeah brilliant. Nice, really nice whiskey the the uh, the cast drinks that i'm getting here are mostly coming from browns and they're uh, single single um single barrels yeah browns, browns. Irish here in kansas city yeah browns is they're a great great family it's actually it's a very unique relationship between us and browns in kansas city i was First time I visited Kansas City, God, it was about two years ago at the stage. Uh, did, did Kerry tell you about this, our relationship with them? No, she didn't. But I, she's no. the one that set us up with the, the distillery tour when we were in, in Clinic Hill two years ago. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, so I, I rocked up to to Brown's. Uh, for people who don't know, it's a, an Irish marketplace in Kansas City. It's the... Um, they say that they're the um, the oldest Irish business outside of Ireland in the world. Um, lovely people, uh, and I I met Kerry, the owner, and she she said, you know, what's what's your name? Uh, I said, it's Sean. What's what's your last name? Scully. And she was, oh, I I know a Scully. Do you know um, John John and Pam Scully? And I was like, basically, my so my grandfather's brother's name was John. He's pa he's dead now. Uh, and his ex-wife, uh, who died in the 90s, I never met her, her name's Pam. So I said, uh, you know, my not thinking that she knew John and Pam Scully, I mentioned this to her, you know, in passing, you know, didn't didn't think anything of it. And she was like, yeah, is that John Scully who walked across America? Um, and I was like, yes, that's that's him. So <laughs> so what happened was, so my John Scully's my granduncle, 
and he did a walk for charity all the way from LA to New York um, back in the in the nineties in remembrance of his um, his wife Pam who just passed away um, to raise money and um, on his walk Brown's been the amazing family that they are um, they um, heard about this um, and his his uh, exploits. And they decided to put on a, a fundraiser. So they gathered the whole um, the whole local Irish community um, around the, the local uh, high school track, uh, got out their bagpipes, and they had a parade around the, the high school track for him. So it was just like, it was the biggest, this is kind of where it's the biggest small world experience I've ever had in my life for her to, to pull out this um, stop and make, make this connection. Wow. And they, they invited me back the next morning for a, um for an irish breakfast with the family and in overnight they had gone into the the back of the house and um into old shoe boxes and pulled out photos of this march and they had photos of this this whole march which is pretty pretty amazing to be honest so anyway they're they're great people um and um i'm glad to hear that's your local spot it is my local spot we uh <laughs> Uh, I don't know if you ever met George File. Did, does that name ring a bell to you? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, George so George is, Dunigal, yeah, yeah, and uh, so he's kind of my my whiskey mentor, and so I was fortunate enough to uh, 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 meet up with him a couple of weeks ago, and we went down to the the Schlieb League Distillery down in Ardra, which was. Uh, that was really fascinating too, what they were nice. doing there. So there's a lot of really wonderful new distilleries doing very creative things, and you are one of them. So I congratulate you. you. Yeah, I know it's, it's an exciting time for Irish whiskey. There's lots, lots to come. It'll be a the the environment um, will be very different in the next couple of years. I feel like. Mm -hmm. Sean, there's a question, uh, maybe a clarification about the double oak, uh, as far as will we see it with your juice in it or is that being phased out and it'll just be more of a, a galley head release um no the double oak if i'm getting the question correct here the double oak is going to include our own juice um but when will, will so i guess the question then is when will they how will we know yeah it's yours versus sourced so when it changes to this new when you see bottles on the shelf that has the, taller a, bottle. a new, the new bottle so you can see the height yeah. difference here yeah it's and taller it the and thinner yep engraving or the embossing on the back then you can be confident that it has their own juice in it and it's um yeah it's really really good when it includes their own single pots to it yeah it's it's this it's, it's, this whiskey is going to get better you know it's, it's it, over time you know this is batch one like i said it's five years old our batch two is even better um, so batch two is what we're submitting now to um, to the whiskey, um, what you call it, awards shows and all this kind of stuff. So it's it's only going to get better and better with time. But again, we we love where it's at already, and it's a great starting point. Um, and we're excited to see where future batches go. I, I agree. I think it's a at a good price point too right now. So I'm just I'm I'm a fan. I did I did yeah. I'm just looking. Looking for that next that next generation. So brilliant. brilliant. We'll, we'll get there. So always appreciate the honest feedback. So thank you. Yeah, I was gonna say you're gonna be able to kind of continue the the domination of cork with the single pot still style. Um, because obviously Middleton has kind of held the you know, held that up for before, but now um some of the other newer Pot stills. I'm really enjoying this one. I think more than uh, some of the others that have come out so far. Um, so I I like this one, and I'm I look forward to to what you know further aging or experimentation and some of the finishing brings to it because the the liquid itself is very is really good. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, I mean cork. As you guys know, cork people are very. They're known for being very proud folk, so um, so we we always like to do cork proud, and I look forward too to the the uh, the green galley head that you mentioned because I haven't had you know I haven't been able to get my hands on that yet, but just another uh, pot still blend 
you know so i mean i think maybe people on this uh that are live on this event know but you know a lot of blends are malt and grain some are single pot still and grain like a powers or a jameson but um so that's good to see another single pot still blend that'll be available yeah no definitely we're excited about it it's uh it's it's a selling point that it's it's important for the likes of yourselves who really understand whiskey that you know pot still is included in this blend um so it's good to, to have that inclusion not only for the flavor but just so everyone knows that um for whiskey connoisseurs but um you know for, for when, you're, when you're selling to people who don't really know their whiskey it's they it's hard to get that across to be honest the how rare it is to have a single pot still and uh, included in a blend but it's reactions that have been great so far and sales have been really good so excited for, to have it spread throughout the states and it also opens up more in more of the on-premise as well you know the bars and restaurants for us we've kind of semi-struggled uh to penetrate those accounts to get on menus and stuff like that up until this point given our price point uh previously you know at 50 50 bucks um but at 29.95 we'll be competing with the with the big boys you know so we'll see how that goes yeah i think people are are always interested in in trying something new um in, in addition to the the whiskey itself you've got a good story you know along the wild atlantic way i know a lot of people visit down that area so i think it's a recognizable name for people here in the states too yeah definitely there's a strong contingent of members in the boston area um Corey call who you may have met are uh, in person or else he's on a you know met online Pork, Pork, Pork participated he host helped host a uh tasting event we did a few years ago yeah um, um, range yeah, I remember that. And so he's actually up in uh, Julio's Liquor in, um, in oh, Massachusetts. For the, yeah, for the whiskey event. Yep. There's a whiskey event tomorrow. So if anyone wants to pop by there, pour it, we'll have swag and all that stuff. And we'd love to see you all. Um, and also that code that I gave to Alan and that he distributed to you guys for our online shop, that's going to be active for another while. So if you guys um, you know, didn't purchase anything or want to stock up more stuff, that's going to be um live still it's for 10 percent off i think i check your emails and you can confirm that yeah if anyone has trouble with that just let me know but that was in the um i think the newsletter as well as the uh email i sent out earlier this week i sent that out again brent brent um to address some direct messages again pete's from pete saying from chicago and just offering to spread the word about clonic kilty um and would it be helpful for yeah uh, yeah, Pete, that'd be amazing if you can. Uh, Binnie's Binnie's are carrying us now. They just got in their single pot still, uh, and so if you could, you know, yeah, if you could bug them about it, that'd be amazing. And um, I believe we'll have some some discounts at the register there, maybe a couple bucks bucks off some bottles. So again, feel free to to catch me on LinkedIn or anything like that or on social media. I'd love to connect. Yeah, that's great that it's in Binnie's because obviously that's a a big outlet in the midwest um, yeah but you know this is um this is a you know i don't want to i guess overstate it but it's a big event i want to say in the next wave of irish whiskey in that you've got a lot of the newer distilleries that are bringing their initial uh, releases to market so we've seen a few this year and most of them haven't actually reached the U.S. yet. Um, so I think the significance of their of Clonakilty's first release, it being a single pot still, it actually hitting the U.S. Uh, pretty significant, kind of, again, ushering in the new wave as we go forward. Um, you know, because it's um, we're seeing other distilleries, um, you know, being sold right now um so we're kind of it'll be real interesting the next few years so it's great <clears throat> to see um kind of the fruits of your labor sean with um what you guys have been playing because you've been doing quite a bit up until now you know in the states one of the more what i would call active distilleries with all your re different releases as well as the core range 
Um, so I think a lot of people have been anxiously waiting. I, cause I do get that question or I used to, you know, when's Klonic Kilty going to release? Cause they knew, you know, you could, cause you'd been, like you said, you opened in 19. Yeah. They knew you could have been releasing. And I said, Oh, they're, they're waiting to, to at the right time. So I think people are, were very excited when you decided to release this year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks. Thanks again for the kind words. And, um, yeah, we're equally excited, excited as, as everyone else is about the whole thing. And, um, you know, we appreciate any, you know, word of mouth, you know, who people can spread the word, good word of our whiskeys. If people enjoyed it, we really value, uh, really value that. And yeah, if there's not any more questions or anything, I'd, um, well, before I head off and I'll, I'll stay for as long as you want me, but Again, I really do appreciate you having me on and allowing me the opportunity to present this whiskey to you. Um, hopefully, we'll have many more meetings for special releases. That you know, heritage whiskey in particular will be a um, a really special one. I think. Who knows when that will be? A couple of years down the road, um, I might be. You know, I was going to say I can't lose much more hair in the meantime, but I'll be <laughs> more wrinkles maybe um, by that stage. But. Thanks well, again I was gonna say the hard part's it. over now. Maybe it'll start growing back, right? Oh, geez, I don't know. It's <laughs> one of our directors in the company, a very experienced man. He says, you know, building the distillery is the easy part, and, and you know, selling it's the hard part. And do you know what? It's it's true. Selling it's selling it's tough going. So, but we we built some good momentum, and um, with the introduction of our tiered price range now, I'm pretty excited to see where that takes us. Yeah, and I think the fact that you have the online U.S. shop helps as well. So for those people in states that, you know, are either far from a store that carries it or just don't have it, it's pretty easy to get. Um, so everybody should be aware of that, that the, the U.S. online store ships out of San Diego so you can get the products pretty easily. Yeah, uh, we're in about 15 states or so, uh, and... I would like to think a lot of liquor stores are receptive to requests. So if you could ask your local liquor store to bring us in um, and request a single pot still or whatever whiskey you want, that would be very much appreciated. Any other questions for Sean while we have them? Yeah, 100%. All right, well, Sean, uh, this is great. I, I really appreciate you um, you taking some time with us tonight to to you know celebrate this launch because again, I I think it is a a big kind of momentous type of uh, occasion. You know, I know you released it earlier in the year, but hitting the states, but it's it it is one of the new distilleries, uh, single pot still style, so the you know quintessential Irish style. Um, so I think it is kind of a big uh, thing worth celebrating. Um, so hopefully um, you guys enjoyed it that have it already. And if you haven't been able to uh, sample it yet, get your hands on a bottle, um, order it online if you have to. Um, but because um, I definitely think it's worth trying. Um, but I'm going to call this the the next wave for Colonic Kilty. So because with the single pot still as well as the green galley head and some of the other and the heritage and some of these other things that sean's talked about tonight um it's you know the product range i guess i want to say is um evolving so if you see what i'll call the older products on on the shelves be it the port um i still see some of the uh, bordeaux single grain in massachusetts for example um, a lot of the limited you're, edition you're gear you stuff. Buy you, that if you can. Yeah, if you see any of these things, you know, grab them, I, you know, because they're not going to be around forever um, because we're, again, clearly kind of evolving into um, this new phase for Klonic Kilty, which is really exciting. But um, so if you're fans of the old stuff, grab it um, while you can. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, definitely. That's it's. Probably the right way of putting it. Phase one is complete. Now we're on to phase two. Um, so exciting times ahead. But yeah, um, thanks again for I'm gonna love you and leave you, as you'd say in Ireland. Um, appreciate you all having me on, appreciate your time and your enthusiasm behind our brand. 
and look forward to future meetings in person and online. Right. All right. Well, thank you again, Sean. And uh, thanks for everyone who uh, joined tonight. Um, uh, I appreciate seeing uh, new and old faces. Thank you. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna head off right now, guys. But thanks again. All right. Thank you. I appreciate you guys joining in on a Friday night. Um, good seeing you all again. And, Thank you very um, much. And I'll be in touch. Again, the newsletter will be out in a couple weeks. And there's a lot going on with the Izzy's and the trip. So, um, but uh, hope you guys enjoyed tonight. Um, we did. And uh, we'll talk soon. Have a good evening, everyone, and a good weekend. All right. Thank you, Great. Alan. Good seeing you all. Frank, all see right, you okay. soon. Take it easy. Yep. Next one. Yeah, you will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks. Bye.